Hey, and welcome to eCampus Ontario's Micro-Credential Forum 2022. Thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Emma Gooch and I am the MC for this event. I hope that you are all settled in and ready for an afternoon of learning. Before we begin, I'm going to run through a few quick housekeeping notes. We encourage you to use the chat box on the right-hand side of your screens to introduce yourselves and to make comments throughout the sessions. If at any point you have any issues or questions, we're here to help. Please use the tech support chat on the left-hand side of your screens to ask any technical questions and one of our team members will be in touch. To enable closed captioning, click on show captions below the video to select English or French. To listen with French audio, please follow the link to the instructions in the chat. To access other accessibility features, navigate to the icon of the person in the upper right hand corner of your screens to access a drop down menu where you can toggle features on and off. We will be live tweeting our event throughout the day. So follow along and join the conversation using the hashtag microcred2022. And if you miss any of our sessions today, we're going to be sharing the recordings on YouTube later on this month. So it is my absolute pleasure to kick us off today. This is eCampus Ontario's fifth annual micro-credential forum. And we've come such a long way from our first event way back in 2017. Hands up in the chat if you were there. Uh, we started out so small and oh, how we have grown. Today, we had over 650 people register to attend. And we have speakers from all over the world, from Dublin to Maine to Oshawa. We have a great lineup for you today, so let's get started. First, I would like to introduce CEO of eCampus Ontario, Dr. Robert Luke. Robert, over to you. Thanks very much, Emma. I really appreciate uh, the introduction and really appreciate everybody uh, joining us today for our fifth annual Micro-Credential Forum. Uh, we are going to start off with a land affirmation from a special guest. eCampus Ontario is committed to equity, decolonization, diversity, and inclusion. And we recognize the positive growth in our collective learning by acknowledge First Nations traditional territories and lands. At eCampus Ontario, we challenge ourselves to do what's right in our collective call to action around decolonization. And while acknowledgements are a good start, we've learned that authentically respecting First Nations protocol means that we invite someone from the traditional territory or lands on which we live and work to welcome us to their lands and to open the meeting with thanks. And to honor us in this good way today is Rowan Smith. Uh, Rowan, thank you very much for coming. Uh, Rowan is a 15-year-old Mohawk Turtle Clan member who lives on the Six Nations of the Grand River Territory. He is a grade 10 student at Six Nations Polytechnic's STEAM Academy in Brantford. Rowan began learning Cayuga language when his family moved back to their home territory six years ago, and he was quick to pick up the language through lessons at school. Rowan's hobbies include playing lacrosse and basketball, and he is also an advocate for type 1 diabetes as he was diagnosed four years ago. Rowan, thank you for joining us today to open our forum, and over to you, please. Thanks, Rob. Scan of Suego, Rowan Yaso. Ganyat Dani Wage Shout Dan, Ganyat Kyono Niwak Wednesday, O Swagat Bogat Dango, Hui Skai Niwak Shriago. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rowan. I live on Six Nations. I'm 15 years old, and I am a Mohawk or of the Mohawk Turtle Clan. Um, I was asked to come here today and do an opening for you all, um, or a Thanksgiving address. And basically, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be speaking in the Cuga language, and just addressing and thanking everything that the Creator has given us, and it's and bringing our minds as one. So if you could all just remove your hats if you have them on, and uh, just make sure you're quiet. Thanks. ネダでゲコテスワトシオスカイワンコオワロネヘドワイワキャントスゴイディソンスゴイディノニョネネオエサスキャンドドノキニョイディネンドエヘンイシャスカンドワイアンゴイゴハスカデボノノニョネテゲ
Oihuana Tatradza, Nate the Sahai Wain Tot sat now song way hate, or handle out when you shiny on gate. Nadine and the way hang the Sabano Hino, said Wuguana, skinny dial. Nate the Ganyo Tot on Guan Iboha. Dani and Watchroi Ganyo Kadagi had a yoke cap kiono. Nate the yoke can't eat off scan or donut kino. Nadine and the way hang, the Athino Hino had a yoke cap kiono, yo can't eat off. Nate the Ganyo Tot on Guan Iboha. Dani and Wachroi, how how gay, gal headed Nagris, why did so? Nate Soto said on it, scano, I don't know, Nio. Nadine and the way hang, the Savano Nio, gal headed Nagris, why did so? Nate to gain your crown, Guanigoha. Dani Tony got Gwen, you get a guy get that, you know, Nio. Dani to. And so basically, um, what I just said there was that it's my duty, or and I was asked to come do this and bring our minds together as one. And in that first little part, that's what I was saying. And then after that, I went on to thank our Mother Earth um, and everything she gives us and all the animals and all the plants that she's given us. And the next part, I went and thanked um, our handsome lake. He was a leader. I think he was a Seneca native. And he was basically an advocate for the native culture and rights back in a long time ago when uh, the, the, the nations fought amongst each other. And then I thank our four guardians. That is basically like they, they're in our mind. They help us think our good thoughts and remain positive. And then in that last part, I just went on and thanked our true creator, who is Sengwai Bisong. Um, I'm going to hand it back to um, Robert now. And I want to thank you all very much. Rowan, thank you very much. Uh, really, really appreciate you coming by to uh, help us open the forum. Um, I would like to also acknowledge the support and guidance of Wendy Johnson, the executive director of the Indigenous Institutes Consortium, a colleague uh, from whom I personally have learned much from, and Wendy kindly introduced us to Rowan to open our forum today. Uh, so Rowan, that was excellent. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. So this is an excellent way to begin our micro-credential forum as we celebrate the many ways in which our community is putting micro-credentials into practice. I'm really pleased to be welcoming you here today and send a special welcome to the Honorable Jill, Jill Dunlop, Minister of Colleges and Universities, who will be giving us opening remarks. I'd like to acknowledge the eCampus Ontario Board co-chairs, Dr. Stephen Murphy and Dr. Anne-Marie Vaughan, and our many members who have joined us today. And I want to acknowledge all of you who are committed to micro-credentials and with whom we all learn every day. The importance of focusing on micro-credentials in practice helps to increase their quality and in turn, their reach and acceptance. Micro-credentials, as we all know, offer important ways to give educational options to people, those that are reskilling or upskilling or just learning about a new topic of interest. And this is where the practice of micro-credentials here in Ontario is helping to lead the way. eCampus Ontario has been active in the micro-credential space for five years and more, and our MC for the day, Emma Gooch, whom you've just met, is an expert in micro-credentials and someone from whom I have also learned a great deal over the, over the course of working of the last year and a bit. Through our micro-credential framework, our community of practice, and the pilots we have funded, we have over the past several years helped our sector to develop an approach to increasing access to education and careers through micro-credentials. Now, I first encountered micro-credentials about 18 years ago when I was working to support the survivorship program at Princess Margaret Hospital. We were looking for ways to incentivize and certify cancer survivors to provide mentorship to other cancer survivors in person and online. And micro-credentials were seen as one way we could easily connote the attainment of survivorship mentor status so as to develop confidence in the broader survivorship program. Now fast forward to November 2020, when Ontario became the first Canadian jurisdiction to have a provincial micro-credential strategy. This is a significant development. In Ontario, learners can get student loans to take micro-credentials. This increases access to education and to careers, especially for those who might be left out of post-secondary education. Our micro-credential portal gives learners a one-stop shop to tap into student loan eligible micro-credentials. And we are committed to working with all of you and the Ministry of Colleges and Universities to continue to co-design what micro-credentials micro mean to learners and their access to education and career success. 
professionals can help us lead the way. So convening people to talk about the importance of micro-credentials and access is one of the things we are most pleased to do. And today and tomorrow, you're going to hear from lots of folks who are putting micro-credentials into practice. And so to continue our welcome, I'm very pleased to turn things over to Dr. Stephen Murphy, President and Vice Chancellor of Ontario Tech University and eCampus Ontario Board Co-Chair. Stephen, the virtual floor is yours, please. Thanks very much, Robert. And Welcome everyone to the fifth micro-credential forum. Really pleased to be here to welcome you all. The flexible nature of micro-credentials, as we all know, I'm preaching to the converted, allows for many things. It speeds up design and de delivery of curriculum and allows us to respond to the needs of industry. It also helps us to respond to the skills needed in the changing labor market as learners and employees look to upskill and reskill. Given the changes in today's workplace and the rapid pace of technological change around us and data-driven business, there has never been a better time to reconceptualize learning. And in so, so many ways, micro-credentials allows us a blank canvas. Micro-credentials provide us with an ability to supplement more traditional diplomas and degrees that we can find in our colleges and universities with just-in-time learning needs. And if you add in the potential of blockchain enabled technologies to the supply of verifiable credentials, it's a near unlimited and more importantly, it's a product that can produce many skills that are transferable across sectors to help Ontario be prosperous, to help Canada be prosperous, and even to help the globe become more prosperous. Micro-credentials can also uh, bring access to shorter bursts of education to rural and remote areas, uh, spurring economic and social prosperity in those communities, as geography, as we all know, is less of a, ver of a barrier than it ever was to delivering content. And for Ontario Tech at my home institution, micro-credentials have been a very real way to add value to our grads. Sometimes we say that in an arm-waving way, but let me give you a concrete example. Our Bachelor of Nursing grads, in conjunction with Lake Ridge Health and Ontario Shores, have developed a safe lift micro-credential micro that speaks to the skills required to move or otherwise abled individuals out of bed and ready for a procedure or a walk or whatever it may be, and, and without injury or risk to anyone involved. You can see from this example, this would be more than you could squeeze into any kind of traditional degree offering, um, and even in many cases a practicum. But to be able to add onto what nurses learn in their diplomas and degrees, and to be able to give them specific skills as they evolve on the workplace and in the workplace, is a real powerful tool that micro-credentials can play. Micro-credentials are what true lifelong learning may morph into, and that's very exciting to me. And as millennials switch from gig job to gig job and employers are requiring new skills, micro-credentials can fill that gap. I look forward to celebrating the innovation in micro-credentials through this forum, and I look forward to hearing from you. And it's now my pleasure to introduce the co-chair of eCampus Ontario, Dr. Anne-Marie Vaughan. Anne-Marie. Thank you, Stephen. It is such a pleasure to be co-chairing eCampus Ontario with you. Good afternoon, everyone. And it's a pleasure to be here with you today. I'm excited to see so many partners from various industries, government and community in attendance as we consider how we can collectively move forward move beyond theory and into practice with this year's theme, the Practitioner's Toolbook, Toolbox. Sorry. As co-chair of eCampus Ontario Board of Directors, I'm so proud of the work this team has done and continues to do in cultivating positive momentum and driving progress towards a recognizable micro-credential framework. Since the first micro-credential forum in 2017, it is clear this event is directly contributing to the evolution of micro-credentials into a mature sector-wide alternative to, to traditional learning formats. While alternative shorter-term credentials have existed in post-secondary institutions for many decades, 
there has been a significant uptake in micro-credentialing, <clears throat> excuse me, specifically over the last two years, which coincided with the onset of COVID-19. As we collectively have made modifications to how we live, work, and learn in response to this pandemic, there was an urgent need for educators, employers, and learners to adapt to unforeseen and extraordinary circumstances. Speaking from my own experience, I am truly amazed at how nimble and resilient employees at Loyalist College have been in the last 24 months. And I know faculty and staff across the entire post-secondary sector in Ontario have worked equally hard in ensuring students have accessible, inclusive learning opportunities. While many of the pivots made were forced upon us, there have been lessons learned in how educators can provide alternatives to traditional learning formats as a key pathway to enabling lifelong learning and accessibility of educational opportunities. Historically, alternative credentials developed through experimentation with non-traditional education have included options such as badging, boot camps, and massive open online courses or MOOCs. At last year's forum, I highlighted one of Loyalist's first official micro-credential programs, the Cannabis Career Launch Program, a fully funded three-week program, which includes a paid two-week placement. I am thrilled to share that this program has been a resounding success in our local Bay of Quinte community by preparing career-ready graduates to work in the Cannabis 2.0 sector. The initial feedback from both graduates and employer partners has been fantastic with 94% participant satisfaction. As the placements have progressed into offers of full-time employment, our employers have clearly expressed the very tangible benefits of this program by commenting on how bright and curious these graduates are. The feedback from grads themselves has also been exceptional. One graduate who found herself unemployed after 15 years in the agricultural industry was able to seamlessly transition into a new exciting career in the evolving cannabis industry by leveraging her previous work experience and applying existing skills to the cannabis industry. The program advisory committee has strong participation from local cannabis sector employers in our region. And this micro-credential has been so successful that employer partners are now requesting additional ones that we are developing. Just like Loyalist, I know that all of you have had wonderful examples to share about the incredible micro-credentials you are developing at your institutions. We know that the successful deployment and adoption of micro-credentials will depend on the cultivation of a robust ecosystem. Establishing a universally recognized framework and definition of micro-credential has been identified as a challenge by stakeholders, which we, will need, which we will need to address in order to support both employers and learners in identifying the very real value of a micro-credential, as well as differentiating them from other similar concepts. More broadly, there is a huge value and potential in the ability of micro-credentials to close talent gaps in the labor market and lower unemployment rates in Ontario, across the country, and around the world. All of us are excited to partner with eCampus Ontario and with each other as we work towards the design of micro-credentials ecosystem, one that is built on pr the principles of equity, diversity, and inclusion. Thank you to eCampus e Ontario for all the work you're doing to drive micro-credentials forward in Ontario, which will enable more Ontarians to upskill themselves in a post-pandemic world. At this point, I have the great honor of introducing someone who I've had the pleasure of working with over the past several months as Minister of Colleges and Universities. The Honorable Jill Dunlop, who has been the Member of Provincial Parliament for Simcoe North since 2018. Prior to being elected, Minister Dunlop was a faculty member at, the, at Georgian College in their Community Justice Services Program and is the mother of three post-secondary age children, which gives her unique insight into the world of post-secondary education. Minister Dunlop, it is so nice to see you again. 
and thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us for this important event. Over to you. Well, thank you so much, Anne-Marie, and great to see you today as well. And I'd like to thank Rowan for starting us in a good way. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm excited to be here today and to kick off what I know will be an insightful event. And congratulations on your fifth annual forum. As Ontario continues to focus on rebuilding and growing the economy, businesses and employers need skilled workers who can hit the ground running, and workers need the appropriate skills and training to land in-demand jobs. And that's where micro-credentials come in. We all know that micro-credentials are different from existing degrees and diplomas, and that they are designed to expand the learning opportunities for any stage of an educational journey. Micro-credentials are unique and offer learners short-term credentials that may include experiential and or non-traditional learning. So what has our government done to recognize the innovative and emerging world of micro-credentials? Well, we realize the need to invest in this form of learning to support students looking for affordable, accessible training opportunities that would help them land in-demand jobs. We made our position clear in the fall of 2020 when we announced Ontario's first ever micro-credential strategy announcing more than $60 million to make micro-credentials accessible, affordable, and widely available. Last spring, we invited post-secondary institutions to partner with industry to design micro-credentials that would meet the needs of today's employers and learners. As a result, we are supporting the development of up to 250 micro-credentials that will be available for enrollment later this year at colleges, universities, Indigenous institutes and private career colleges across the province. Some are individual micro-credentials focusing on skills such as digital marketing or network security. Others are more complex, stackable micro-credentials focused on topics like dementia care, tourism, and artificial intelligence. Indigenous institutes are also doing some great work developing specific micro-credentials in the areas of Indigenous relations and land-based healing. As we work to expand the program offerings of post-secondary institutions in Ontario, we want to keep equity at the center of our plan. That's why we're the first jurisdiction in Canada to fund micro-credentials through a student financial assistance program. I'm pleased to announce that as of today, more than 1,500 micro-credentials are eligible for OSAP. And as micro-credentials are developed, we continue to review them to determine if they will qualify for financial assistance through OSAP. This is part of our plan to make micro-credentials affordable and accessible. And speaking of accessible, the pandemic has created a shift in expectations around how people can access education. And since many micro-credentials are offered online, learners can have access to upskilling opportunities anytime anywhere in Ontario. That means that regardless of whether you live in a major city like Toronto or Ottawa, or a smaller community like Kenora or Sarnia, you can still pursue high quality rapid training opportunities that will help prepare you for in-demand jobs. To make it easier for learners to explore available micro-credentials, we worked with eCampus Ontario to create a micro-credential portal. Over 1,500 micro-credentials are now listed in the portal, with more being added regularly. The portal's design was developed through input from many of you. And supported by the Micro-Credential Portal Advisory Committee, eCampus Ontario has done an exceptional job putting the end user at the center of their design work on the portal. This has resulted in a resource for both our students and institutions that is truly user-centered. But we're not finished yet. I look forward to seeing the portal continue to grow and evolve, much like micro-credentials themselves. I encourage you to explore the portal at www.microlearn.ca. As more people discover the potential of micro-credentials and enroll in these programs, we will move closer to a world that recognizes and embraces flexible labor market-driven learning. This cultural shift won't just benefit learners, but businesses and institutions as well. I look forward to making use of today's learnings from the forum and working with all of you as we expand micro-credentials in this province. Together, we will build on the strong foundation of our internationally recognized post-secondary sector 
and innovative businesses to ensure that workers have access to skills and training they need for the in-demand jobs of today and tomorrow. We are committed to strengthening Ontario's position as a global leader in education and training. We're not just investing in capacity, we're investing in people and their potential. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Minister. I, I love the uh, the end part there. We say we're we're investing in people. I think that's really significant, and uh, we can't overstate the importance of of uh, the significance of the Ontario micro credential strategy in providing access through OSAP eligible um, micro credentials. Um, we really appreciate the opportunity to work with you and your team over at the ministry, uh, and certainly uh, with our entire sector to help. It'll really usher in a what what is a new chapter in in uh, post secondary education. I mean, I guess in some respects, you know, we've been doing this for a few years, so we've been turning the page pages for a while. Um, but it's it's fair to say that the page on which we've landed is quite significant uh, and and really game changing. And not just, I mean, it's easy to say those words that it's game changing, but but uh, this idea that you can get a student loan outside of a full time program. Uh, it may seem obvious today that it was the right thing to do, as you said, from a, a learner perspective. Um, but you know, having the taking the leadership to make that change, I think, was really was really significant. Uh, and I love the discussion about you know online learning uh, anywhere, anytime, because we we like to think about yes, it, it's anywhere, anytime, but it's also everywhere, all the time, so that we can get people to learn uh, in you know high quality ways. Uh, Pretty much wherever they are across the province and I guess whichever time zone they're on or uh, whatever their work schedule is. Um, but I do want to say thank you on behalf of the post-secondary education sector as we really appreciate your commitment to con continuing to build a strong and vibrant educational ecosystem and micro-credentials form a core component of this ecosystem. The, this micro-credential framework, as I said, that includes student loan eligibility means that we have in place a framework not just for the post-pandemic recovery, but also long-term resilience. And I think that's really important. So thank you again, Minister. It's always a pleasure to uh, share the, the virtual stage uh, with you. Uh, I want to thank Stephen and Anne-Marie as well uh, for coming to join us. And Rowan, thank you for your, uh, your introduction as well. Uh, really, really appreciate everybody coming to help us open the fifth annual micro-credential forum. So we've got a few minutes until the keynote uh, starts, which I had up in front of me a moment ago, but now don't. Um, but you can click on the, the, um, the links to the left. Oh, wait a sec. There it is. Um, I'll tell you exactly who it is. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Tara Lachlan coming uh, to talk about X credit, visibility and validation, uh, which I'm quite looking forward to, uh, not the least of which because it sounds very interesting, but um, because uh, Dr. Lachlan has used the metaphor of the iceberg, which I think is, is uh, really fitting for us to really try to see in what does uh, what do micro-credentials mean in practice, but what happens when we see beneath the surface uh, of, the, of the water, as it were, and get to what does it take to put these into practice so that we can provide these meaningful inroads for access to education and careers. So thank you again for joining us. I'll see you all at the keynote in five minutes. <laughs>